Hello, this is an assessment in transit for restoration of a Beckstein Model 5. That's an old Model 5, made in 1903 though, which is unusual because Model 5 Beckstein uprights really finish in 1902. Though there's a slight sort of crossover period where you find models crossing over between before 1902 and after 1902, but that's the age at which Beckstein Model 5 changed to Model 10, which we'll look at in a minute to compare. Just for zeroing down on the pedal, because we can see how much wear the pianos had by looking at the right-hand pedal. Beckstein right-hand pedals do tend to wear quite easily anyway, so uh, the fact that this one is practically flattened on the front is not unusual for Beckstein, so it doesn't indicate an amazing amount of wear compared to other pianos, their pedals will survive a lot better. Other aspects of Beckstein are brilliantly made, obviously, and uh, that's not too much of a problem, just cosmetic. Just looking at the cosmetics on the piano generally, um, it's a nice faded rosewood, which looks very pleasant indeed. And if we look here, we have some nice inlay as well. Um, typical of this age of Beckstein Model 5s, which are one of our favourites, but they do have a particular problem we'll be looking at soon. It's very common, and this piano's got that problem. Just wondering what's happened here, because this is very, very dark. This is clearly brass. I presume that's brass. It's just, for some reason, rather got evenly dark in a slightly unusual way, perhaps, but that's, that's just me. Um, looking at the music stand here, it's lost its backstay. If you look here, uh, we can see that that's broken off. Now that would hold it further out, which makes it a bit, bit better for music to rest on. Otherwise, it's a bit far in. So that obviously is something we can replace. The sides of the piano are equally faded, slightly patchy. We could possibly just liven it up a bit with two or three hours with our polisher looking at it. But also there's a slight damage on the top here, watermark obviously, and the veneer's lifting a bit. So that's, that's easily repairable. The back of the piano is absolutely in uh, very, very good condition. And I, I haven't seen any woodworm or moth in the piano, so that's encouraging. Just to look at the fall of the piano, you can see how beautiful this rosewood is. And obviously it's been up generally, therefore it's a different color behind. We could obviously repolish the whole piano. Here's a mahogany Beckstein Grand that we're French polishing at the moment. It's about 30 coats of French polish applied and then it's finished off so that it doesn't reflect too much so we can see the grain. Here's the sides of the Beckstein. Here's a Blue the Grand in stock that we've repolished and uh, has a more figured rosewood. This is an older Blue the Grand. This one is dated 1898 and the rosewood tend to be a bit more figured in those days. So um, obviously you get a nice contrast in grain. So this one could re-repolish. Just looking at the underside of the, the lid, which is often left the original colour, and you can see what the original colour was. But faded rosewood is very popular. We can obviously do a lighter rosewood than the original. So that's, that is one possibility to think about. Uh, key tops of the piano are very, very good ivory. Um, doesn't look as though any have come off and been stuck back on. There's a very slight dip appearing where it's been used a lot, but not really very much. And there's a little bit of chipping, which we can certainly repair. And they need buffing really, because they're, they're a bit dirty and will attract dirt if they're not shiny. Now looking back at the action on the piano, we can see the tapes um, are needing replacing really. There's one being replaced here. If we take them off, certainly they'll need replacing, which we may do, I'll explain what work we sh think we should be doing. Now looking at the major problem, which is this rest plank behind here. This is typical of a Model 5 Beckstein, unfortunately, and that even if you put larger pins in, so there's one here, the tuning pins are still going to be loose. Well, this larger pin is holding better than these smaller ones, uh, but it's still on the loose side, and there's one or two particularly here, if we listen, are clearly very, very loose. The middle pin here, which is this one, uh, is extremely loose. So almost with, I can just touch it with one finger and it'll go down. So that is the problem there. And even if you put longer pins in, we found pianos that have been fully restored and we've had to put new rest planks in because they still go on loose, even though they're new and longer tuning pins. So if you're a restorer, I'd, I'd encourage you to change the rest plank. I know it's a long job, but worth doing. And then this one, and you can see strings are broken as well. I'm not quite sure why the strings are broken. That's not necessarily related to the rest plank, obviously. But it, uh, we would restring the piano when we change the rest plank anyway. We, we do it regularly on Model 5s and Model 4s. Model 5 is my preferred make of the tone. In fact, it's a wonderful tone. 
down there is really warm sound. Now the hammers are, are very, very worn. They've been refaced once already um, and they're now worn again quite flat. So really to get the most of the tone, you really need to correct, that's quite bad. Well, partly because it, it's moved over and hitting, not hitting all three strings as we'll see there. In fact, it's only hitting, that's hitting two there, as you can see. Um, they're a bit out of center, but they are, they are flat. And also they're going quite soft as well. So uh, I would definitely like to put a new set of hammers on. And unfortunately that's quite a long job. And if you're going to do the rest plank and this, um, that you consider you've got a lot of work to do. The, the action regulation isn't terribly bad. In other words, there's not any slack in the key here, or not very much. There's a little bit. If we look there, there's a little bit of slack, and that would improve, obviously, if we regulate it. So I want to show you the different. I want to show you the difference between the Model Five and the Model Ten. Now, this has a what we call closed rest plank, so you can't see it. There's metal over the top of it. We're looking at a Model Ten now. This is a Model 10 that's in stock and, and you can see the open plank here. There's no metal covering here and it's actually the better model. So you'd have thought perhaps metal over here as they have in most modern pianos is better. But in fact, the problem, the problem is that um, the rest plank dries out on the Model 5. Model 10 doesn't tend to dry out. Though strangely enough, uh, this one that we, we didn't restring it ourselves. We, we bought it and the rest plank has been changed by somebody. You can tell that partly the colour, it's always a light colour on Bechstein Model 10s. But if we look at the back of the piano, you can also tell. Now if you look at the seam at the back, at the top of the piano, you can see that this lid has been taken off and you can see clearly it's been uh, coloured in here where it's come off. And if you look carefully, there we are, that's pretty obvious marks of it having come off and been put replaced. Um, we usually just try and disguise it a bit more than that, but um, if you look at the back of a piano, it's a sure sign where the rest plank has or hasn't been changed, that you see a slight gap or slight damage there where it's been taken off. You can see more there, that's more obvious. So back to the Model 5 we're assessing. Um, it has a closed rest plank here, so uh, that's just typical of a Model 5. If we look at the top of the piano at the back, you see very, very clean and no evidence of it having been taken off and stacked back on again, as you can see when a, when a rest plank has been replaced. So that's an assessment of a Bechstein Model 5 upright piano. Um, and I don't know if, obviously it's gonna sound comical on this because it's well out of tune. Um, but I want to try and get you an idea of the underlying tone. If you play that, you can hear, well, we know that Bechstein Model 5 has a very good underlying tone. Just want to check it round here that it hasn't lost any of its down bearing. And, and it's, they don't tend to actually. And now they're nice and rich. So although it's well out of tune, you can hear the underlying sound is gonna be excellent. And we love restoring these. They, they do restring really well. Once the rest plank's done, they're really excellent pianos. Of course, in terms of value, we couldn't do it as a stock piano because we wouldn't be able to make a profit. But if, you, if it's your own piano and you want a beautiful sounding piano, then um, I can recommend having the work done. And we've done perhaps seven or eight of these over the last three or four years. So well worth doing. As you can see, I don't know why I'm playing it like that because it's well out of tune, but it's fun anyway. Thank you very much for listening. As an afterthought, I thought I'd just play this Model 10, which as we said, is very similar to the Model 5. If anything, the Model 5 has a sweeter tone around that area. But both pianos a very rich, warm sound, and touch is excellent on both pianos. Now down the bottom, they're straight strung pianos, so you don't get a very long bass string, but as I've said in other videos, the, bass, the strings around here are actually longer and the tone more even than on the overstrung, which is a model, um, so this is a model 10, the overstrung's a model nine. In case of the model five, the overstrung's a model four. There's other videos about those, so I'll just be brief. But you can see the, how it could come out.
Thank you very much.